You know, it's funny looking at this collection of items in front of me, I feel like I'm a real, like a bit of a hippie. Getting high and going to the woods and reading the Tao Te Ching. But I guess I'm okay with that. I'm getting back to my Seattle roots here. Hi, I'm Josh Rosen, host of Dirt on Huckberry. Today I'm going to show you what I carry on my person daily as well as what I would carry into the backcountry for uh, a day of hiking as well as cooking a meal back there. Let's go. Today we're coming to you from the base of the Cascade Mountains in North Bend at my dear friend Max's garage. So I grew up in Seattle about 15 minutes from here. Since I was a kid, we were going out into the backcountry and cooking, mostly because it's just so easy. There's an abundance of ingredients everywhere. We have berries everywhere uh, to pick. We have fish in the streams uh, and mushrooms growing all over the place. So it's kind of a natural thing just to gather what's around you and cook it and makes it a lot easier for packing in and packing out and also makes the adventure a little more interesting. So my personal carry is three Four things I don't leave out the house without. First, I got my iPhone like everybody else. It has this beautiful uh, case that my daughter picked out. I have my keys. You know, you need to start cars and open doors, but uh, I attached this piece of driftwood uh, that I found on the beach. Figured it would fall off immediately. It's been about two years now. Got my wallet. Uh, this is beautiful. My friend Zach in Kauai, uh, handmade me this beautiful wallet. It's of waves and a beach and uh, every time I look at it I think of him and Kauai. I never leave home without a hanky. This one my daughter made me. Uh, my daughter and my mom have been sewing lately so this was an easy thing to sew because it's a square of cloth but uh, also when you have a child I don't know how you live without a hanky. I don't know how people do it so that's always on me. And then a knife always. This is a Kershaw. Carrying a knife is something that my dad always did. You don't always need a knife, but I feel like of a universal tool, there's nothing better than a knife. I probably use this knife at least two or three times a day. So the one item I never leave the house without is a good knife. So moving on to the backcountry pack, um, you know, you, you will take different stuff out to go different places when there's, you know, different things to do when you get out there, but there are certain things I will always bring. Uh, first is a fishing rod. Tankara is the easiest, lightest, smallest fishing rod you can get. Look it up. It's a lot of fun. It's really technical, but it's, you know, once you get going with it, it's amazing. I like to forage. I like to see what I can find uh, when I'm out there. Uh, seasonally out here, there's very few seasons you can find nothing. I mean, at the end of the day, you could get some rose hips and make tea if you needed to in the dead of winter, but through the fall and the spring, the summer here, lots of foraging. So I always bring a foraging basket. Uh, this is one uh, that I've had since I was a kid. When I get out there, you really only need a few things. You can use a rock as a cutting board, you can use a log, so you're really just gonna need a knife. This is the Lampson cleaver, and I use this one because it works in a couple of fashions. Obviously, it cuts things, but then you can use it for sauteing, you can use it for flipping things over and moving things in and out of the fire. Great all-around knife, insanely sharp, beautiful company. <laughs> Building fires, when you're in the Northwest or anywhere that's wet, I always bring fatwood. Fat wood will burn immediately. I know there are some survivalists out there that are gonna say you just gotta rub two sticks together or make a bow or hit a rock. And that's really cool that you guys can do that. I'm gonna use this and a lighter um, every time it just starts a fire. And when I'm hungry, I just wanna eat. I'm gonna go the easy route. A saw is always super, super helpful because again, it's super wet. You wanna cut out branches that are under big logs to get the dry wood. Saws are just always good to have in your pack no matter what. Foraging knife, uh, this one's by Oppenel. They're just Oppenel knives. I don't know about you, but I just want to collect all of them. They make a really great foraging knife. The brush is amazing for mushrooms, gets all the little pieces off. If you are collecting mushrooms and you start putting them in your basket and you haven't cleaned them first, um, they will all, any little bit of dirt will just spread over all of them. So clean your mushrooms, 
get a good forging knife. So many knives, gotta have a pocket knife. This is just kind of all around pocket knife, bench made, really strong um, backup, sort of, and also amazing whittling knife. So when I go out into the backcountry, I got my fishing rod, um, I catch a fish. Now, trout is notoriously one of the most disgusting fishes you could possibly eat, but it is also our most abundant. But how to make it taste good? Well, you go to the gas station, any gas station will have condiments. I've got mayonnaise, hot sauce, Tabasco, that's like new to the uh, gas station scene, and salt and pepper. Now, if you just quickly cook a trout over the fire, pull the meat off, mix in some mayonnaise, hot sauce, little salt and pepper, put that on a cracker, bring a little thing of Ritz, it's delicious, it's a delicacy. So this thing just goes from this mushy fish to this beautiful fish salad. So strongly recommend trying that out. A little microdose, you know, expand your mind. Um, I was once told that uh, psilocybin helps you see your environment better and LSD helps you see your universe better. So when I'm in the backcountry or even just going on day hikes, I like to um, see my environment a little better, expand my mind and, um, you know. See what happens. Uh, proof, base layer, always. This is antimicrobial, sweat wicking. Always run one of these. It's gonna be hot going up, sweaty, and when you get up to the top, um, oftentimes you're just sitting there these proof base layers are a must have. I got a water bottle, pretty self-explanatory. Stay hydrated. You get up there, you're sitting by the lake. I like to have a little something to read. Currently I'm reading the Stephen Mitchell version of the Tao Te Ching. You know, it's just good practical stuff in there. Uh, mask and snorkel. Seems like a kind of clumsy, weird, big thing to bring along with you, but there are lakes and streams and rivers everywhere you go. I always find it funny that people go and they sit by a lake and don't go in and see what's in there. There's cool stuff down there. So I always bring a snorkel and mask. Lastly is this beauty. I just keep it around because it keeps water cold and it keeps things hot depending on the season, but uh, hydration, right? Just multiple versions of hydration. So with that, you know, we're off and running. So these are my backcountry essentials. Um, I will rarely go uh, out on a hike with, without any of these things. Uh, but the key part of a successful backcountry hike, or any hike really, is a comfortable backpack or a backpack that both fits your stuff um, and then fits the adventure. So I use this Yeti Panga 28 liter on most of my like day trips. So the most particular item on the table for me is gonna be the fly rod. Um, in Washington, our trees are really, really tight, and sometimes they, or a lot of times, they push right up against the rivers and streams. And so uh, I chose a nine foot uh, Tankara rod because um, you can just kind of flick it and you don't need a lot of back casting space. Um, these guys are beautiful. A lot of these Tankara rods are uh, made in Japan. This one is. Um, in Japan, fly fishing has stayed in this style. The Western uh, take on fly fishing is to add a reel, but in Japan, they still use this method. And of course, because it's Japanese, it's gonna be beautiful and have gorgeous little things like that. It just telescopes out and then you've tied your fly rod uh, line on the end and you're ready to fish. Incredibly fun, so Japanese. It's a little sock. This is just our daily stuff here in Washington. You just throw a bunch of um, necessities in your pack and you hit out on the trail. And so I have an eight year old daughter, Bo, and Bo and I will be um, out on the trail all summer long, playing, whittling, fishing, snorkeling, reading the Tao Te Ching, foraging yeah that's that's our summer plan so here it is this is my everyday carry now that it's all here it's time to pack it up and we'll see you out there